right. Check, check, check. We are back. They said it couldn't be done. But damn they it, did. we they defy the it. odds. We defy the odds. We're back. They said that. <laughs> We're back. We're back so very hard. Uh, we should probably pick up a couple of paychecks from uh, taking a little hiatus here. <laughs> hey, hey my, girl was like, back. my girl was like, hey, do you guys even still do the podcast anymore? Everyone. Everyone. I've gotten I, asked a lot. Like, so are you guys still yeah. doing it? Yeah. Hey, how's the podcast going? Well, damn just, it. It's going well. We just took a season. We're here we to just, let you know. We just took our Game of Thrones season break. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, Game yeah. of Thrones I mean, breaks are, taken those a year. Two year breaks, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. We didn't do that to you guys. I think we dropped in June. So it hasn't been no, quite, we, maybe it's been two months. It was right yeah, after June. your wedding. Yeah, right after your wedding, yeah. right? So, yeah, yeah, June. We're back. We're going to get back into the swing of things. It's a five on five podcast presented to you by directmusicservice.com. F I V E O N F I V E will get you a couple bucks off your first month subscription. Go over there and get some fresh edits, originals, remixes from some of the best. Trav, let them know. So, this is for everybody that already notified and dinged the bell and they subscribe <laughs> to our YouTube. Okay, we're back. All right. We're back. Yeah. Now. I like how you did that. With everybody that got notified that we dropped this YouTube, let everybody else know that they need to hit the like, hit the subscribe, and then ding the bell every time we drop a video so that they know to see our beautiful faces. That was great. Just like that. That was, that was awesome. Awesome. Change it up on us. That yeah. was a little, uh, a little misdirection. I like it. I was, yeah. I was tuned in to see where we were going with this. <laughs> well, I mean, we've been gone for a while, so this was a good opportunity for all of our subscribers to know that uh, we're going to be back. Shaking hands, kissing babies. I so, like it. Yeah. I like it. Uh, I guess we should do the new name. I'm one of your hosts, Velvet Haas. <laughs> yeah. Uh, right. Down the street so good from me, Nick Lopez. Down the street from him, Jupiter Williams, and Grant is uh, in Paris, uh, hanging out with Taylor France. Swift. Yeah, yeah. in Paris, man. Uh, down in down in the south of France. Uh, it's like <laughs> a, a Cameron Dipset line down in the <laughs> south of France, <laughs> eating croquettes. You yeah. Know? Uh, is he on a yacht? No, we. Uh, he, get on he, yacht he might be on a yacht. He might. He looks uh, like he's, he's doing eating. some aquatic things. Yeah. They were all Jesus. urban adventures, but I think he's getting a little coastal. Mm, I, ho- I hope he's in like the the good water. Yeah, not the poopy water. <laughs> I don't not that shit either. water. Not the poop water. The <laughs> cock- <laughs> poop water. Cock- <laughs> <laughs> water. <laughs> they got that poop river down there. Uh, <laughs> we'll get into that river. later. We'll get into that later. <laughs> Uh, it's been so long. We can treat this as an end of summer episode. I think, Absolutely. I think this is, we're close enough. Uh, the heat in Vegas is starting to subside and that's usually marked by the perennial Jupiter Williams trip to Las Vegas. Things cool <laughs> down as Travis makes his way out. Yeah. Everybody like had their fun. Day. All right. I'm going to yeah. come visit and right, play some music now. for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. I'll be uh, down there on Thursday um thursday yeah, through through sunday playing um uh, playing three nights down there nice that's great out. first one's with the with the agency so shout out shout yeah, out omar yeah. shout out we're run yeah yeah well i mean you can okay 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 we yeah, don't yeah, need, yeah, we don't need people being like hey guys <laughs> yeah, i heard yeah, yeah, yeah. on the podcast that, yeah yeah i mean those are yeah, that's that's the one name we can leave in we damn, yeah. damn portland djs will be out there like man, okay that's who it is Hey, I heard. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> the cold one exploded. Liquid IV inside mm. oh, the Pellegrino. Okay. Mm-hmm. It's a pro move. Just turned into a fucking science experiment. <laughs> it's a fucking the third grade volcano. Yeah. Mentos in the Coke. I fucked that one up. Uh, <laughs> You guys might have to censor that one too. That was a fucking <laughs> mess. Pause. That was, that was a mess. I'm glad those two things happened back to back. Yo, 
go, you ever uh, remember like when you started drinking <laughs> champagne and you're like, I can just chug this right here and it oh. shoots out of your nose. Oh. <laughs> like that was that was a growing experience. And then I remember my first champagne hangover and I was like, I don't really fuck with this. And then the bubble guts there was a time. I don't know about too. you guys. There was a time where I was drinking a lot of champagne. I was too. Mm hmm. I thought I was dope. I think I yeah, I was it was it was my early twenties for sure. I thought I was Jay. That's such oh, a weird all the face. champagne bottle by the net. Yeah, well, would, we'd get so many comps yeah. working mm. at the club, mm -hmm. and when we go to outings, they would always comp us a vodka and a champagne. And so we just there was always a moed at the table, so we'd always be drinking champagne. And I'd be like, I'm not drinking vodka. I'm, dr I'm drinking champagne. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I thought I Pardon was like me. above it. Like they're both comps. I don't know why I was acting like I was above it. Exactly. And then I was just champagne. Right in the morning. <laughs> it was it was such an era because I think as you get older, those hangovers for champagne specifically. Mm -hmm. get amplified by like 10,000 percent with the sugar and the carbonation it's, it's, it's 50 percent sugar even the yeah. good stuff like that's how you feed um that's how you feed like how you get it going so like mm -hmm. i didn't realize like until i got into like actual bartending and learning how things were made like how much sugar really is in champagne and dude you're it's crazy it's you're asking for it yeah Blind taste test, can we tell the difference? I don't think so, right? Blind? Blind, blind taste oh, test blind for champagne. Taste test. Um, yes. I mean, they taste different. I guess if you knew, like, <clears throat> but I think, like, I can taste the difference between a rosé and a brute, but I couldn't tell you the brands. Right. Yeah. Right. There you go. I think the average layman, if somebody was like, hey, we got a bottle of Dom, and then you give them a glass of just, like, two buck mm -hmm. chuck. Yeah, no. <laughs> I don't yeah. think people... I mean, Bart says do group. that with vodka all the time. Right, right. Yeah, and a Smirnoff, for a, at least for a long time, was, like, the winner in most taste tests, blind taste tests for vodka. Mm. Crazy. So like, Crazy. they'd be like, "Well, it's the it's the best tasting vodka. It always wins." <laughs> <Jesus. laughs> vodka, we can tell the difference. Which cracks vodka, me up because yeah. vodka is supposed the whole thing is that it's supposed to taste like nothing. Right. right. When I can I can far point out a Tito's the... from a mile away. It tastes like something. Tito's has a distinct taste. Svedka has a distinct taste and they have a distinct hrd smell. has a distinct taste hrd hrd yes hrd oh my god hrd is uh hood river distillery but it's big everywhere oh, that's some, that's it, it is no, no it's not no it's not it, it's not no? no trust me it's not no hrd is no. everywhere hrd is hood everywhere river distillery it's, it's, yeah it stands for hood river is distillery. it american yeah it's that it's out here in portland Okay, so that's local. from Portland. That's, that's it's not it's not local though. It's not local. They but it's from Portland everywhere. But it's yeah. from Portland. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Who do we have? Vegas has Deep Eddies. Oh, oh well, Deep Eddies is that's... um Texas. Well, there are Tito's. No, Deep Deep Eddie is Texas though. That's where yeah, Deep Eddie is. Say, so <laughs> I thought Eddie they were from Vegas Texas. for a while, but I hear they're the same distillery. I think so. Yes. Yes. If you, it, even like so, when somebody pointed that out, you but can Tito's tell is the Texas too. Tito's is yeah, awesome. I think they Texas come from, too. Yeah, Tito's is Texas. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. So Deep Betty's not from Vegas, but I for, we do have one from Vegas. I can't remember, but I mean vodka's vodka. Yeah. It's it's yeah. Uh, there was a time, and and you listen to like old rap and stuff, that Bacardi was so huge. Bacardi was cutting deals with everyone. Bacardi, Bacardi was put, putting out a lot of... Isn't it of interesting that, like, a rum company... Well, I mean, it's all about endorsement. That's all it comes down to. But it is kind of interesting that, like, rum was the was the, the song, the was the drink of choice for rappers <laughs> for a minute. Yuck. Yuck. What did Kanye say? Um, <laughs> Bacardi in Malibu? 
Big Cardi Harris. and Mel <laughs> Two rums. <laughs> Fuck it. <laughs> I lo- that's one of my favorite rap tropes is uh they don't know how to drink. So they just yeah. mix in spirits with spirits. Oh, for Hypnotic real. and Alize. Yeah. Hypnotic and Alize. Hypnotic and Hennessy. What's that up? is um, not gonna do you right. There's no, we'll, no we'll chance of drinking hip. Oh my ah, god, Slurricane. Yeah. What's in Slurricane? That's Slurricane. that's gonna be a deep dive. I'm number crunching it. Uh what's uh what's the somebody somebody ordered an amf the other day oh that'll wow i mean that's if you're broke and amf i see i see amfs a million times a night i don't don't see them that often i guess i guess i i'd be playing at a lot of uh craft cocktail bars so it's like (laughs) you know they're not making amf so so when i saw an amf i was like yo wait a minute where are we pardon me (laughs) Trav so said Slurricane <laughs> is Jamaican rum. It's like a punch. Oh, Lime, okay. lemon, passion, grenadine, guava, and Jamaican rum. So that's like oh. a proper punch. That's, sounds okay. What's what's a brass monkey? Oh, a brass monkey, for if, if I remember correctly. The funky monkey. Um is a... Nobody's ordering a brass Now it's monkey. a pre-made cocktail. Oh, is it really? Um, dark rum, orange juice, and vodka. Oh, <laughs> oh, what the but, fuck? But the original, the original brass monkey, and this is the one I know, is malt liquor and orange juice. Ah, uh, like uh, a Mickey's. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's disgusting. Um, it's not that bad. It's not it's that bad. Incredible Hulk. Heartburn. <laughs> It Incredible is Hulk, Thug Passion, I think is Thug Passion. the OG. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What's That's the one... an expensive one. Yeah. Uh, Al- Thug one. Passion is Alizé and um, what champagne is it? Cristal? No. Moet and Alizé. Oh, it's Moet. Uh, A little more affordable. Because... Um, uh. You know, we went off of Cristal. Hip hop went off of Cristal. Oh no, one one part Alize, one part Cristal. Oh, uh-huh. yeah, that's that's the recipe. That's what he says in the song. I thought it was more. I mean, you could sub out Cristal for. It's all about branding. I think you have that's to. I think you have to now because we are. Like nobody's buying Alize anymore. They're buying Hennessy. Well, nobody's buying Cristal buying anymore either. Cognac. Nobody's buying crystal, ra- especially rappers. <laughs> <laughs> Why would they do that? They blew it. It's so funny how much rap, like, influences the alcohol, like the liquor companies. Mm-hmm. They blew it. Like that entire industry. They like, remember? I mean, we. They said we don't. We don't need hip. They like, said we don't need hip hop. And then they show how <laughs> they show the stats. <laughs> They're like, what? yeah, really? kind of should. <laughs> You remember who was who was behind the whole Crystal movement? Who was it? A Diddy thing? Diddy. Diddy was also oh, I thought obviously. It was, the oh yeah, Diddy and thing. Jay too, right? Well, the, and then Ciroc, yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, Jay was another one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Jay, yeah. Blew, Jay blew it up. Jay blew up the Crystal. Jay bottle, blew it up um, in the early two thousands. DOA video. We need. Remember to, when he said death of auto soon? Yeah. Yeah. That day ain't well. <laughs> Boy, was he wrong? That day ain't well. T Pain came up on a stage to a summer jam while he was doing the song. Crazy. That Yo. Well. Crazy. Now every rapper uses auto tunes. Nuts. Yeah. It yeah. Couldn't have been further off from yeah. reality. He tried. I'll give him that. He tried. Yeah. He tried. You got to take a stance, though. He you took do. a stance. It, yeah. it got the views, it got the likes. I'm not mad at that. I'm not mad at that. We need Damn. to talk about how how No Hands was was a champion for Moscato, a dessert wine. Oh yeah, Moscato had a run. Moscato had a run. Dessert there. wine in the club. The yes. flex. I'm I, I was, I'm drinking a dessert wine. Bro, I remember females ordering Moscato at the clubs. Yes. I'm gonna sip Moscato, oh, yeah. I'm and gonna you're gonna Moscato. do your dance. I can wow. see. I can see wow. that because black people like sweet drinks. Black people do like sweet drinks. So I can see why the appeal of like that's Kool-Aid. Kool-Aid did that to wine, us. It's a that's little Kool-Aid. too stiff. 
we're going with Moscato. It's Kool Aid. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And daiquiris. Black Honestly, people love daiquiris. Black people love daiquiris. Especially the aunties. The aunties love daiquiris. Very easy to drink. Hey, very easy to drink. They're delicious. I like, I, 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 black people as, as a whole, speaking generally, do not like the taste of alcohol. <laughs> Except for Hennessy. <laughs> I, don't, I don't get it. Which I'm like, that's the worst one. It is. It really is. Like, if you like Hennessy, you're... But, but see, you're, this is the thing, though. You have a there's, seasoned there, palate. There, there's, there's levels to Hennessy, though. There's levels yes. of Hennessy in the like P- Paradis Hennessy is like the really phenomenal. expensive ones, like the white Hennessy. Yeah, yes, yeah. Oh, phenomenal. Yeah. The white XO. barrel, phenomenal. Yes, yeah. But then you got these niggas in the club that just do the bottom of the barrel Hennessy, man, and it's like, stop, please stop. It's not a good look anymore, y'all. Please. It's so I, funny and it's so expensive. Oh, Hennessy's not cheap, right? No, it's it not. used to be. You can get it a used to be, and then SOP they run out of it. for twenty five bucks. The demand for Hennessy is ridiculous. But like, once you get like the VS, it gets like fifty bucks. And... That's when it starts tasting good. But then you can get yeah, it climbs up very quickly. Yeah. Do they still make hypnotic? I think we talked. Yes, about they do. It. They I think hypnotic. they still they make they hypnotic. Do. They do. Uh, was, they. I had a they, summer of drinking hypnotic. Tyrone, you know how Ty- my that's, freshman year hypnotic. That's what on I was ice. about to say. That's what I was about to say. My Damn. freshman year, I was deep in hypnotic. And you remember Nuvo came out after? Crazy. Yeah. Nuvo. I remember Nuvo. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. I bottles. remember I would uh, see Nuvo sometimes in the it's like pink, right? Yeah, that pink bottle that looked like a bottle of uh, yeah. perfume. Looked like a huge bottle of perfume. Yeah, it looked like a perfume. I remember seeing the Nouveau bottles, and I was like, "Do we sell this?" <laughs> I never Somebody ever bring saw this them. In. <laughs> like I remember seeing it in the in like in the walk in and being like, "Do we actually sell these?" And they're like, "We haven't in a long time." <laughs> <laughs> blow the blow the dust off of it. Yeah, because I mean, I'm only a few years younger than you guys, like one right. or two, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So I think I just barely missed like the end of the hypnotic nouveau thing in the yeah, club. Yeah, because it, it it had a it, it had a summer. I had oh. to been, like, hypnotic. Hypnotic, summers, hypnotic had a couple right? summers. Nouveau had one summer. Sure, nouveau had a summer. Short when summer. It was. It was. Yeah. <laughs> I remember if, specifically yeah. Ciroc Redberry was like the vodka of choice. Mm. For, like. I remember oh, that. I remember that. Ciroc Redberry, yeah. It's just oh. raspberry, I think. Mm-hmm. They couldn't. They couldn't call it that. Mm-mm. I don't know why, because all the other ones were had flavors. Green apple. <laughs> oh yeah, they did, huh? Blackberry, they redberry, vanilla. like why did they call it redberry? You remember uh, the Soco and Lime Summer? Oh yeah. Uh, no. <laughs> No. Yes. Yeah, I never. So cool and yeah, I they had they had uh, commercials for that. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. That was big. Oh man. But there was Soco and Lime. It was a big, big summer. And talk about a hangover like you've never oh, seen. Oh God. Well, because yeah, Soco's uh, not whiskey. It's a liqueur. Yeah. It's a liqueur. Yeah. It's, <laughs> should not. Uh. Uh-uh. Uh. So you're drinking uh, a rocks glass of that with uh, a three count of lime juice. That's disgusting. And man, we were it was we we're taking it no ice. Seven and oh seven. God. Remember Just seven and seven. Seven and seven. Seven and seven is classic. Classic. My dad. My dad used to drink seven and seven. seven, seven Seagram seven. seven. Mm-hmm. Uh, what about Caribou Lou? Mm. Tech nine. Tech mm-hmm. nine. Mm-hmm. Caribou I was Lou just thinking, is... I was like, there's Caribou Lou, and that's like a he, he made like a legit cocktail, like that's yeah, a, that's a thing. I remember I my buddy was like, go ask for a Caribou Lou, and I was like, <laughs> no, was, I, this was before I had my like I, before I was 21, I was sneaking into a place. I was like, I have a feeling that's gonna get me kicked out of here, <laughs> like that's gonna get me caught. Get and out! Was like, what the fuck's a Caribou Lou? And I was like, I don't know. 
<laughs> no phone, no phone to reference it. Yeah, no uh, phone to like pull up a recipe. And even then, he's like, dude, I got a full fucking bar. Like, you know, <laughs> stop me bothering me. <laughs> Guys, guys like a who? Carib- Caribou Lou. 151, coconut rum, pineapple juice, bitters, and nutmeg. Just a pinch of nutmeg on top. That's what bar has? That's interesting. Just a. Like, That's you have to be in a cocktail lounge. It's a cocktail lounge bar. <laughs> like, drink, I mean. <laughs> like, no regular bar just has, like, a nutmeg lying around. It's a miniature golf course, dude. Just order a fucking drink. Get dude, out of you here. don't get a fucking seven and seven and get that. <laughs> seven and seven. <laughs> drink a seven and seven and like everyone else. <laughs> just, just order a brass monkey like everyone else and get the hell out of <laughs> order here. A brass monkey, shut the hell up. Uh, Rick Ross and Bel Air sparkling wine remember that yep that's still, that's still going strong thing. still going strong still a thing mm-hmm. sparkling wine not champagne because it's American. right right hey, shout out mm-hmm. shout out uh what was ti's rum bamboo bamboo oh bamboo, bamboo. yeah he did have that mm-hmm. and then yes. uh, Vir- virginia uh, black was also virginia black mm-hmm. drake's uh, drake yeah, Drake's Virginia whiskey. It was all right though. Looked like a brute bottle. That's right. A bottle of like brute. Uh, Travis long. Scott with cacti. Cacti. Oh yeah. Oh, that is that still around? Berkeley? That's still around. That had a moment. It did have a moment, but that's still around. That was right after White Claw came out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's so Rock and Diddy, Valeria Cross. Oh, duh. Jay Z and Duce. Do you say? Oh yeah, that was a big uh, legal battle on the way out. Yeah, yeah. I remember J J J um J sued that was Bacardi. The the Hennessy replacement. J sued Bacardi, and I think he won. When was that? Ace of Spades. Uh, last Ace summer. Of Spades. Oh. Ace of Spades. That's J. Mm-hmm. Ace of Spades is called what armand de bergerac the actual yes. name of it yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Hmm. all taste the same yeah i, I, I don't cool i honestly Ace of spades is they have like a little they have a rubber grip uh-huh. and you punt so you can grip it better to pour it yeah smart smart and their bottles yeah. have a cage mm-hmm. so they don't shatter do you remember anyone ever ordering these like liquors based off of a wrapper? Like, oh, let me get Drake's whiskey. Um, I never saw Drake's whiskey go out. Ciroc, obviously, I saw go out. Uh, Top, right. Well, because you got to think when they're in the club, they're listening to these songs. Yeah, want to have it. Yeah. So like, Ace of Spades always went out. Duce went out. Um, Moscato. <laughs> Never saw Moscato. I don't think that's that one crazy. Pulled off. <laughs> hey, let me get a mis- bottle I of Moscato. Totally, Cameron, I totally forgot about that. Yeah, yeah. Remember Cameron and Dipsa launched Scissor? What? I missed that one. So this was in 2004. Yeah. Okay. And it's a blend of cognac, vodka, and natural fruits. Oh, oh no. Man. So, what are we doing to the black community, man? What are we doing? That's what I mean. Like, I love that these people, like, they make drinks, but they don't know how to drink, so they're just mixing spirits. Just give me a pimp juice and call it a day. Right, Why would man. you mix cognac and vodka? Oh, that's disgusting. That's like getting picked up by your head and your legs. Yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> that's a lot, man. There's no way you can survive that drinking that. Like, no what way. you're gonna drink that for a whole night? Nicki Minaj had a Moscato called Mix. Is it pink? Uh, it's like a dark pink. It's yeah, w- Moscato wine mixed with fruit juices and flavorings. So as if oh, Moscato so wasn't sweet enough, right? Effin, Effin, Effin vodka, fifty cent. Yes, I forgot FN was 50. 
Uh -huh. I used to have a a bottle signed by uh, oh. Mr. Two Quarters himself. Nice. Crunk juice. Crunk juice, Lil John. Crunk, Crunk juice, juice energy drink. Kind of ahead of the game. Wait, did as it? As far as. Didn't they sell that in a uh, uh, gas can? The, the original, uh, they did have the promo gas cans. Yes, okay. But they, um, Crunk juice was a, an energy drink. Right, exactly. All right, Trav. Here's the quiz. Who's the guy that used to always carry the gas can around? What was his name? Oh, man, it's the big boy. I forgot his name, man. The baldy guy. Yep. What was his name? Well, I, I don't, don't know remember. it. I don't, I don't remember. remember it. <laughs> I don't remember big, it. One of the big, East Side big boys. Mo. Big Mo. <laughs> is that Big Mo? I don't know. I don't know what his name is. All right, Maybe. Pee. Yeah, for real. <laughs> I don't it? know. Okay, here we go. We have one that I've never heard of. Um... Cream by Pharrell. What? Cream with a Q. Twelve point five percent alcohol. Don't milky vodka in strawberry and peach cream flavors. Ew. Come on. Ew. Oh. Two thousand eleven. Oh. oh my god, my stomach is turning right now, bro. <laughs> like I am not doing well with dairy, man. That, uh, it mix alcohol Rocky with it has. too. Oh. It's just supposed to be strawberry and cream vodka. Uh uh. And milk. Uh, like it's milk. Uh, it, That's like you gotta, the, you gotta understand the that like that, how much how much preservative is in that in, in that milk? I was gonna say you know those bottles of, are just sitting there. Oh my god. And then it's also not like a it's the shape of the bottle, it's like a grenade. Like this thing is not like Oh, what the hell? Wow. Oh, they kind of make it like a um the Perrier bottle. Yeah. The Perrier, Perrier, sorry, Perrier. Well, it's like not the Hennessy Perrier. Perrier, yeah. It looks like that. Yeah. ASAP Rocky has um what did I see? He has a Mercer and Prince. It's a whiskey. Mm. Ugh. Can we talk R about some Cardi B's is kind of crazy. What's she got? It's vodka infused whipped cream. See again, why and whip shots again with these with dairy? Why are we doing this with dairy? And you're just gonna let it sit? That can't be probably I mean, not refrigerating grandma, it either. Grandma, get grandma, yeah. Nobody's grandma? refrigerating that, grandma. Yeah, I'm not oh. drinking it either though. Um. Ryan Reynolds is doing okay with his on uh, gin. Aviation. Aviation. Gen. Yeah. Yeah. Distill, Aviation, distilled right, yeah. Distilled right here, like a couple blocks up the street from me, actually. He's, he's doing is well like, everywhere. Is yeah, he held is. in high regard too. Like a lot of yeah. um a lot of like cocktail bars, like that's their go to. Mm hmm Like a like a perfect middle shelf uh gin. Yeah. It's well, not bad. Uh Clooney used to have Casamigos. He sold it mm -hmm. though. He did sell it. Yeah. He was endorsed by them. Millions. I thought he owned it, but he's just endorsed. Yeah. Well, he had a, he had a stake in it that he sold. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think he got a hundred mil for his share. Wow. Was it? Yeah, yeah. I think it was something stupid like that. Um, yeah, and it was just in with some friends. They tried to make it. Their marketing was really good because they tried to make it seem like it was like a real family company. Yeah. Right. With the paper labels. Yeah. Then like, but you're like, Malibu. yeah, George Clooney's behind it. You're like, oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> it's, the fam it's the family. Here's here's George, the like, brother. What? You're like the, the worst George Batman? Clooney. I suppose yeah. we should talk some DJ shit. Let's mm. talk. Mm. I um at the top of the show you introduced your new name. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, we, glossed, we really did gloss over that. Dude. We really just glossed right on over that <laughs> because we're living yeah. it. <clears throat> but uh, I suppose for the people who are listening, we should talk about that. Yeah, I uh, went through a rebrand. I mean, I'm gonna kind of keep it keep it loose. Yeah. <clears throat> um, I went through a rebrand. Uh, kind of backed by um, a certain pop star, and uh, we're trying something new. After 18 years, I'm going by a new moniker uh velvet hoss and yeah so far so good 
it's uh it's given me a lot of opportunity to create some promo behind it for you know fun stuff and ideas that i always wanted to kind of get out and i think it's a new uh ushering in the new chapter of you know me living in vegas for the last year and kind of being a a personality on the las vegas strip i guess is kind of the best way to put it um yeah it's it's it was definitely like you know a little nerve-wracking to like go ahead and change your name and kind of go buy a new thing but i kind of had a really good team behind it that could kind of help me transition with the logo and with the marketing and everything like that and um i kind of figured that m- my gigs would stay the same you know i talked to nick for a while about this and uh yeah you know it's uh something new you know something to freshen up the brand and i mean i don't know what do you guys think Oh, you already know what I, I think. think it's man. I great, man. It. I think it's great. I think, um, I think when we were like in that weird limbo stage of like knowing a new name was coming, yeah, and being like nervous about what it was gonna be, yeah, and all that like, was ner- I think that we wasn't like, <laughs> that wasn't a record. We're like, what is he gonna call you? That yeah. wasn't a record because, <laughs> because he was like, yo, I'll call you. I'll let you know. Give me yeah. a week. He was yeah. like, give me a week. Just give me a yeah. week. And we were, we were like, like, what? what the fuck is he what could he possibly come up with? <laughs> yeah. And I mean, yeah. I think it was, I mean, the conversation we had was like, and I actually recently saw a post that kind of reminded me of our conversation about it was like, it might just be time. Mm-hmm. You know, like mm-hmm. it might just be time to change the name. And um you know, maybe it's hard. It's a hard thing to do because you're like, well, I've done 18, I've put 18 years into this. Mm-hmm. I've done 18 years worth of work, like good work, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's a lot of flyers out there with that name on it that like, if I change it, like it feels like I'm starting, starting from over. nothing. Yeah. yeah. But it's just not true. You know, like you, that's still your past. That's nobody else was Phenom, you know? Right. Right. That version of Phenom. Um, yeah. And um, so I mean, your work is you, still your work. You, Nick, of all people, know about rebrand. I mean, how many names you got? Monica, uh, you got? I, I've, I mean, I got a lot. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Currently, I'm like a Wu Tang member. <laughs> yeah. FKA, FKA. Yeah. <laughs> so I think the work doesn't go out the window, but I also think having a name so somebody was like i think it was one of those dj instagrams with a record pool was like you know if you could give yourself djs with more than 10 years experience if you can go back and give yourself any advice what would it be Mm. and dj newmark said um don't give yourself a name with any hyphens or Mm. characters like it's it's a it's a google search nightmare Mm. And I think it goes to the same with those names that had the undefeated type of spelling. Yeah. Where you got rid of all the consonants or got rid of all the vowels and kept only consonants. Um, and it left it leaves it up for interpretation. Yeah. And when you see it enough times, you just know what it says. Right. And I, like, I still up until still the run end. into those people who don't know what undefeated says. Yeah. Up until the end, I had people asking, well, dude, now that you're going by Velvet Haas, can you tell me what the other name meant? P-H-N. I was, I was always like, spell, spelling it out. Uh, yeah, they're like, I was always afraid to ask you. Or, you know, like, Tegan was like, oh, my friends are always like, what does that mean? Like, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, yeah, it it doesn't define you. And I think a lot of times we kind of get into these, like, these war story mindsets where you're like back in this day i was such a badass and i did all this cool shit and this that and the other and it's like that's not tied to a name per se it's tied to like the whole journey you know 
and also who gives a shit you know at the end of the day it's like at the end of the day the only person that cares as much that much as you yeah you know and and i think a, a lot of djs grapple with that in being like my career was popping 15 years ago and now maybe in 2024 things have cooled off or whatever and they're like clutching onto that and i think a forward thinking mindset would be if you're ready to switch it up go Mm -hmm. ahead Mm -hmm. you know like a, a moniker is gonna kind of shed that previous history of you know i just play one genre or i just look like this or i just do this or I'm just tied to this club or whatever and be like, oh, you know, he moved cities and he leveled up, you know? And I think that Phenom isn't necessarily the Vegas moniker that Velvet Hoss is. Mm -hmm. Uh, Yeah, it just, it's, I think it just ended up being very quickly just like the better option yeah for the environment yeah that we're that you're in and it's like well i kind of want to run with it and it's like you said like shed new skin like get rid of the old stuff yeah it's done it did exactly what it was supposed to do yeah and what better way to like relight the fire than to start a whole new fucking thing and we met the other phenom two nights before the real yeah that was kind of the crazy oh, part we, we know there was other phenoms i didn't know that they hadn't met though we hadn't met so neek was out with me and ivy and morris code and um ivy's like oh dude like phenoms coming out edwin from dj city and yeah. Food Source. and i was like it's like no shit i've always wanted to meet this guy and i met him the biggest sweetheart first of all just nicest guy and he was he was like dude he's like so good to finally meet and i was like hey just so you know i'm not <laughs> going by our name anymore starting on monday <laughs> and uh and he was like what really you know like our first meeting is is me being like yeah like this is all your name now dude, dude like dude was you know. like you know how you know how many girls i got from this name man now well, it up. well he goes he goes he goes you've made quite the name for yourself with this name for ourselves. he goes i i know yeah look how good we've done <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, you know and I, <laughs> you've I, made quite the name for ourselves <laughs> And I was like, dude, like, so good to meet you. Looking forward to building on this friendship. And now this is yours. Like, <laughs> there's not going to be any mishmash, mix up, whatever. I'm like, that's so funny. It's so, it's so like, cool. it's funny. It's because it's such a like, an actual end of the era where it's like yeah. Yeah. yeah the last days of you being phenom you finally get to meet the other phenom and be like well it's i'm not I, I, in two <laughs> days that's it <laughs> he was like what was like, he's like yeah, we finally dude. meet and the first thing you tell me is well, I'm changing the name. <laughs> it's like the Spider-Man meme where they're like pointing at each other and then yeah. I take the mask off and I'm Sting underneath the Spider-Man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But no, it's, um, yeah, you know, I, I, Neek, I've, I spoke with you uh, pretty in depth over the last, you know, couple of months about this. And it's like, people are going to fuck it up. They're going to get it wrong. They're going to get mixed up, whatever. There'll be a time where, they search for you and nothing comes up or whatever, but in the grand scheme of things, it's not going to affect my work. It's not going to, to, you know, hinder any previous work. And Listen, now the people, I'm in the the people that are hiring you know who the fuck you are. They and know. I, that's yeah. all, that's yeah. all that really matters to at the end of the day, you know? Yeah. And it's funny. Cause like very rarely, at least for me, do I actually need to show additional things? Like, 
my EPK or yeah. like my previous work and stuff like that. But usually I get based off of my most rec- recent things. But every yeah. now and then, you know, a big event will come and they're like, hey, can we get a bio and picture and EPK and stuff like that? And um, that would be a place where you would put like formally, you know, mm-hmm. formally like under the moniker of Phenom, blah, 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 and carry on. Right, um, right. So now those people can associate with that. But if they look like Velvet Haas and they're like, this guy hasn't done anything. Like, I, you know, he's looks like he just showed up today. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, but like people aren't going to not book you for that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If they look at you, if they look at you, they see you, they're at your gig, they see, oh, we want to have, we want to book this guy. They're just going to go off that and right. they'll ask you to send all the additional stuff. They want to, most people aren't going out of their way to look it up, at least from my experience. Right. Like if have they can't played... find anything, they'll just ask you for it. Yeah. Yeah. Have you played in Chicago? Been, you know, have you played in Chicago since the name change? Have you played in Chicago uh... since the name change? Second week of October. Are you going by Velvet House or are you going by Phenom? Velvet House, yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. New press pictures, uh, and then the, the new logo. And I'm kind of at the point now, and, you know, Nick and I kind of touched on this the other day, like, we don't necessarily need to churn and burn social media promo. Right. It's not really necessary to be like, oh, you know, we're we're playing here, we're playing there, we're playing, you know, which is cool. It's like, it's fine with us, like, because these gigs don't have, a lot of gigs don't have flyers. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a lot of gigs out here at least in the like the realm that we're working in don't do a lot of promotional like in that way yeah like flyers and like hey we have this yeah. dj it's just and they don't need to. It's, it most of them are tourist spots so it's like right. it doesn't matter like mm-hmm. that's not going to bring anyone in exactly they're going to be there anyways yeah it's like with that obligation gone i feel like such a major weight has been lifted mm mm-hmm. mhm mhm in in doing this rebrand because mm-hmm. now we're like we can share as little or as much as we want and i've honestly dude like kind of quit twitter i kind of have taken a step back and shit posting <laughs> like <laughs> i mean i'm using this as an outlet to just be like not that there needs to be an anonymity with a new alias i do love that idea uh i forget who said it where uh i think it was tommy lee said it. he's like people used to be so mysterious like you never knew what the fuck prince was doing and now you know what everybody's eating for breakfast Mm -hmm. and blah 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 and it's like yes but also we're not prince where we can just fucking sit back on our laurels and be like hmm, right what they're thinking about what i'm doing right now but there is a balance in that one though there is a balance there's in total that. balance there's a balance there's in a total there. balance and i live I for that balance time, i definitely live for that balance yes. posting that balance with intention is, yes. yes posting mm-hmm. with intention that's mm-hmm. i think that's the key mm-hmm. um because i think mystery and anonymity are like are are um are luxuries yeah right but it's very intentional too though yeah you have to get to a certain point where people actually like you said like prince like people want to know what prince is up to yeah um nobody gives a shit what i'm up to (laughs) you know what i'm saying it's it's not a joke i have to I, i can still like pull back but only post with intention, like only Mm -hmm. promote what I want to promote and um, only let you see what I think you should see Mm -hmm. um, without being, because you still have to, you know, at the level we're at, we still have to promote. Yeah, you play the game. Yeah, of course. True, Um, true. But because people don't don't know who we are, they're not seeing. Right. But they don't have to see, they don't have to see you hanging out with your cousins. They don't have to see you hanging out with your sister. You know, you know that's what I mean? the intention, you know. Mm-hmm. 
And that's where it's like, all right, well, if I'm going to utilize, if I'm going to be career focused, like make everything related to, Absolutely. you know, my music or, or my, my persona and kind of lean into that, into the social media, unless you just want to be like, I feel like I'm personally a little bit more uh, forthcoming on mine and more personal. And I, that's just been my you are. brand. Yeah. You are. Um, I'm not. I'm definitely works. not more personable. <laughs> and I know you guys are a little more like you know. I'm definitely it. all all business. On so on many the, pe- yeah. so many people don't know my government name, and I love it like that. And I think that's that's in itself is cool too. Um, it really is just a matter of how you want to do it. But I think when you do something like a, a name change or a brand change, yeah, it's the perfect opportunity to switch up. Yeah, yeah. I read. Um this book which i wanted to share with you guys uh how to make it in the new music business by ari herstan Mm. and i highly recommend that everyone reads it i've posted about it a couple weeks ago on my socials um he hit this comes from his perspective of uh the band side of things but this book is totally applicable to djing and producers and everything under the sun and he said these posts that you're doing where you're like posting inside jokes with your best friend or whatever like on your story people are like mm-hmm. all right like i don't yeah. really give a shit <laughs> well you know or like tagging you're walking with someone and then you randomly like tag them in the instagram story nobody's gonna click that and be like oh who is this you know random dude pal that that this guy's walking with you need to save those posts and save this attention for major major moves you know where people can actually be like oh this has an effect on me new releases you know promoting a a show that actually means something to you compared to promoting just another monday afternoon that doesn't have a flyer and is not going to repost you and you know you're just dj question mark at that point you know you're not Not a bad name you're just working you're working you know and it's just work especially if you're just like a background noise guy that's not and you're not you're not hired to like really do your thing anyways yeah it's like we need somebody to play this genre and um, I think people prop that up hours. to let people know the optics that they're working. You know, yeah. a lot of people will be like, hey, I'm here, 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 and here this week. And then you go and look at it and you're like, how many of those spots have provided a flyer for you with mm-hmm. your name on it? How many of those spots are investing back into you and promoting you as the talent? Those are the ones you want to follow up with. Yeah. Those are the ones that you want to pour into that cup because the rest of them don't even really see the DJ as that investment. Mm-hmm. It's, it's just a, 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 it's somebody just working. It's added layer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We needed music. We got music. You know? Which is fine. Live DJ. You give Live DJ. Attention. You give it the same attention in return. Yeah. You know, you go there, you fulfill what they ask of you, but mm-hmm. that doesn't mean that it's not going to elevate your brand because they're no. not they're not pushing you either. But you don't need to prop those up anymore for social media posting. And, right. and that's that's kind of what I, I've taken a step back on and being like, is this person even going to repost this post? This, mm-hmm. Is this venue even going to repost it? Mm-hmm. No. Well, then I'm, I'm not going to. Why bother making the post at all? Yeah, I'm not going to reach out to my community to prop up a one-sided situation. Oh, go follow this venue that is not going to swing the pendulum back my way, you know? <laughs> right. We're in the same battle together. We are. Yeah. yeah. You know, um, once we get to that venue, we're all in the same battle together. So it's like, uh, I mean, I feel, what I'm basically saying is I feel everything that you're saying. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And, and. That's- it's it's tough to say why the pendulum doesn't swing back the other way you know because it's more promo for them it's more visibility for them and it's so easy to do a repost yeah but they don't want to 
extend that microphone noise for something like that. It is kind of hard to say why, because like the only reason I could see why they wouldn't that make that would make sense for me is if it was like a bad post. Sure. Right. Like yeah. if right. you know you made your own flyer and it sucked. Yeah, and they're like, I'm not posting that because right. I mean, how many times do we see that where people will make their own things and they're not good? Yeah, yeah. Or, really or it just doesn't reflect the, not necessarily. That's what I was gonna say. It, it doesn't, doesn't reflect the the bar. align with their branding. Uh huh. Yeah. Because I've seen that a lot of who you are versus what they are. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you're not really aligning those things, so they don't yeah. really want to post that just because they have an aesthetic. Mm-hmm. Um. But also there's reasons beyond that where they're like, we don't like to promote DJs and that's just that. Yeah. And that's cool. You know, I'll still collect my check, but like, I'm, what's the point of me even promoting this? <laughs> like, but see, and then, yeah. and then there's also the other side too, right? Where it's like, you don't want to, don't want to seem like that annoying person that's always posting shit, right? Yeah. Right. So then there's also that other hand where it's like, well, even though I'm playing at this this bar and even though I've made posts with this bar and whatnot, this bar is always popping. So you don't even need a post tonight. I can just show up exactly. and, and we're but we're all <clears throat> in this together. So you know what I mean? The and way the- oh go ahead. I was going to say, and it's it's also like an, a, the type of venue you're in. Mm-hmm. Like, if it's a bar or club that has, like, you know, high energy, they're going to promote. They're going to yeah. promote you, like, yeah. in some capacity. Yeah. But if you're playing for, like, a restaurant, for example, Tough. chances, mm-hmm. at least out here, like, if on the strip, I should say, like, these play these they're not promoting the dj playing they're, right they're promoting the environment the venue mm-hmm. they're selling the venue and at that yeah. point you're just a part of the venue mm-hmm. and that's okay too but you don't even need to promote that because there's going to be people there anyways for that way i mean like uh, I, a that way. Post, I like a calendar post i put it on my page mm-hmm. as a sticker you know i mean like as a pin you know where to see it every month and that's about the most i'll give it mm-hmm. The battle you're going against now, and this is my personal experience, and I I feel like we're kind of all along the same line here. You post with retention versus projection, okay? Mm -hmm. If you post and somebody sees that, chances are every post you might lose one to two followers. Yeah. Just off the rip. Off the rip. Now, are you going to double that on the other side of things? Are you going to gain four? Probably not. And then you're honestly. always kind of crawling. You're always kind of crawling around this number, right? But if you save these posts for more cannonball explosion kind of moments, when there's more visibility and more branches on the tree, that's when you can fire off without lo- worrying about losing the four because it's going to 4,000 others. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's that's kind of how I'm leading my intention posting now. That makes sense. And I know it's it's kind of like super nerd shit, but you don't want to flail at the same number. You don't want to flail at the same number all the time. Yeah, exactly. You know, you're like, like, I've had had 300 followers since I started this thing 17 years ago. You know, like... What's the point if you're just speaking to the same crew every time? Right. The, 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 the people that are being held hostage by the algorithm, mm-hmm. the same, the same, and now it's 10%. So the same 30 people of your 300, and then you're getting 10 likes, no reposts, no visibility to new faces, and then you're just kind of treading water. So you just, like, and a flyer isn't going to move the needle. So no. I can move the needle. A recap video isn't going to move the needle. I wasn't there. I'm not. I'm not getting fired up by that. Right. By some stock song and you walking in and dapping up with the door guy and like it's. <laughs> it's we've more, all seen that now. Everybody's doing and like I'm still like I still do recaps and I use the recaps to promote the following one. I think that's yeah. that's more of a 
So like if, if right now I'm doing a monthly yeah. and we didn't have a recap for the first one because we have nothing to recap. Yeah. <laughs> So we had to use footage from another venue. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah, yeah. that didn't, prom- you know, without promotion of them. But like, th- that's as opposed to being like, man, we had a blast. Like, never mind that. Like, coming up is this mm-hmm. on this date. Like, the and the all the information doesn't talk about what we did. It's just what's coming up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're so leading think, like, people. Yeah, like this is what it looks. What it's gonna look like. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. but to do an event just to have a recap with no future plan well it's just kind of like well that was great like we weren't there yeah so i think a recap if you have like an ongoing thing could be valuable if you use it to promote the next thing the next date open-ended mm-hmm. posting yes or evergreen posting Yes. Hey, we do this first Friday of every month or whatever, you know? Yeah. And but then... if you're doing like, if, if it was a one time thing, I, I can't. What's even the value in that? You're not. Yeah. Like, it's going to be cool to post, like, oh, I wish I could have been there from people who really fuck with you. But like, there's yeah. nothing happening again. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and You're better off just you po- reposting everyone's stories. That's the recap. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. and then yeah, no, you're right. You're right. And the other way actually tanks your visibility. The mm. more, oh yeah, one hundred percent posting too. Oh yeah, when you're a fucking when you vomit mm-hmm. post, yeah, you know, mm-hmm. and and Instagram is like, whoa, buddy, mm-hmm. fifteen posts, fifteen posts today. Like, we're is gonna show okay? this to maybe a. Uh, a hundred people at the end yeah. here but if you're like this is me and that's me and look at me there and i'm here and i'm there they're gonna be like uh, they get it dude i'm not gonna keep advertising you for free here like if you want to pay right. for this like sure like right. we can you know they're like just hit that button over there and we can make this a post and you can do the whole thing and thanks for the money and see you later but they're like i'm i'm not in this business with you we're not we're not both making money off of this. <laughs> right. Very true. So I'm gonna throttle you right there. Like the first one was on the first one was, the first on, was on us. That was on us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know yeah. about these other five though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know. And and any any restaurant, any club, any venue too would be like I also am not in this business with you and and i am dropping followers rapidly with every post you make so yeah you know intentional posting goes yes. so much further yeah it does. you know a schedule is good but they're gonna forget about it tomorrow morning they always yeah it's yeah they will forget you know like it's good to kind of send out to people like one-on-one obviously above the algorithm is the email chain so so if you do the email newsletter and with your schedule and blah 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 the retention that you're going to get is going to be much stronger than posting on insta and also more people are going to open it take a look and maybe they're going to be too lazy to opt out of the next one Mm -hmm. The Instagram op out is super easy. They're like, yeah, unfollow. It's a little mute. fun. Mute's the worst because mute now you're in no man's land. Yeah, We're still you following are. you. Yep. We're I never no going to see idea you. What you got going yeah. on? No clue. No clue. And like, not even, at least if I don't, if I unfollow you and we have mutuals, like you'll show up on my discover page. Mm-hmm. Right. If I mute you, I'll never see you again. Right. Yeah. But you still get my number, like you still have my one extra follower. Yeah. That is no man's land. That's a weird place. That sucks. It's the void. Place to be. It's the void. void. <laughs> because the even void. if that dialogue is still open, it takes a lot for them to bring you off mute. Because chances are they don't even know how to do that. <laughs> That's very true. <laughs> and now you got to sees... risk the embarrassment. The muting process is funny because, like, 
you if you accidentally unfollow someone trying to mute them yeah i'm just oh, fuck it we committed because i'm not yeah. hitting follow again and getting yeah. no, 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 sorry yeah. about that i uh <laughs> i only meant to mute you i didn't mean to yeah, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> enough but not forever you're yeah. still there i just can't hear yeah. you or see you <laughs> once you're out you're it's too it's it's a very there's a lot of room for error in that process you're, <laughs> you're clicking too fast and then it just goes haywire i th I think though um you know w with that moving forward with that marketing with the intention to reach more non-followers than followers that's how you got to approach things mm -hmm. and and like that's kind of the reason why i picked up this book to kind of sharpen the blade on some other sides of what we do mm -hmm. because you have to be a, a really good at marketing now like yeah intentional marketing mm -hmm. yeah. you know like i i dropped that video for the rollout and like i can show you guys like the statistics on that like the numbers like you want it like it was more it was 87.9 percent non-followers damn great man that's good great. that's really good that's really good that's my introduction to people is their first time seeing me yeah yeah. You know, like like the rest of you guys will come around because I'm watching your stories and you go see who's your story and you're like Velvet, huh? Who the fuck is this? <laughs> I'll get I'll get that and then you'll yeah, go back exactly. through and you'll like the video. But my first message out there is to people that are walking by on the street and they're like, Whoa, uh I don't know what'd you say, PHNM before? I don't not familiar. Yeah. But this is cool. I like this. Velvet has. I know what that means. I can read that. Yeah. yeah. Can yeah. read that. Can read so that to my son. That's kind of that's like, kind of the the angle I'm kind of taking now with this intentional posting is kind of slowing down on pouring into cups that don't even really give a shit. Yeah. Cuz at first everybody thought like, "Oh, if I have a gig, I should automatically post cuz that's what I've been told as a DJ and I should do this and, you know, let people know I am here tonight." Nope, especially if this, if this gig is popping, if this, this place is popping, what the fuck you need to post for? Right. And they're not, if they're not posting, the, I think the big thing is if they're not posting you. Bingo. But even if That's they post really you, the one. If they're even if they it, post you, if they post you, then you repost. Don't you post. You repost yeah. them. Like, that's the easiest way to go. Yeah. Like, there should be no reason for you having to make and post without them mm -hmm. promoting. Not everything needs to be a ladies and gentlemen moment. Boom. With that being said, <laughs> ladies, and, ladies gentlemen. and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> no, with that being said, though, I think there's a certain point because I don't oh, I know. I thought you were going somewhere else with that. My bad. No, no, no. Where everybody <laughs> is in listening to the show, I don't know where they're at when their careers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is a point you have to get to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Early on, everything is a lady. everything's a post. Yeah, everything is everything's a post. Yeah, make flyers. Mm -hmm. Do you're fighting for visibility. You gotta mm -hmm. fight for visibi yeah. visibility. Visibility yeah. yeah. if you're not out and about. But if you're just a if you're a working guy that's working a lot or a working girl that's working a lot, you gotta. I would say pick and choose the things that are more important and that are investing back into you. Yeah. Um. Are investing into you period not even back into you just investing in you promoting you so that way you can in return post and you know it has to be mutual mm -hmm. yeah um you shouldn't be the one making the flyers i mean or I even or even even theory. if you are i shouldn't say i should say that because, because in smaller because markets y'all are, yeah, are, are actually Vegas. the ones doing it yeah, y'all are in Vegas. Yeah, we're in Vegas, uh, so here, I don't want to say up, like. Yeah, up here in Portland, we it's we different do have to in make other our places. Own flyers. Yeah, we do have to make yeah, our own so, flyers. So I don't want to be But like, that does that does come with be. a certain that still comes with a certain degree of shit, right? So yes, you know when you make your own flyer, you still expect them to to repost it. They should be promoting it. They, they should be with promoting as much gusto right. and like enthusiasm as you are. Now, if, if you they, make if, it and they if, don't post, that's if you make wild. it, and you don't post the next time around. You ain't gonna get a fucking post. I'm, I'm not gonna show gonna up for the gig because yeah. I'm showing up. You for guys the gig. aren't promoting. I'm the only one promoting it. Like, yeah. who? 
is this a partnership or is this me like auditioning and i'm not yeah. with yeah. the audition shit anymore yeah mm -hmm. yeah Mm -hmm. and i think speaking that's the of I'm trying there's to the speaking of we can there's... get into that go on Tell them. let them know i i just think yeah like the auditioning process once you get to a certain point like the trying to prove yourself thing like if you have enough experience you have enough of a track record like i i don't need to I don't feel like you need to like keep that sort of an attitude, like walking on thin ice. Yeah. If you don't post, you're not going to like that. That's it's a waste of time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I I think that you be focusing on music and, and sharpening up and sharpening up your set. You could be, you could be sharpening up or your like ears with, with listening, with working hearing with somewhere and, that actually in, yeah. like is invested into you. Your consistency is the negotiation. Mm -hmm. that's that's you coming to the table can you duplicate that on a nightly basis are you a liability when you get there mm -hmm. that's 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 the determining factor right now can you move people mm -hmm. and are you easy to work with mm -hmm. so and that comes that, that comes from shit. that comes mm -hmm. from if you don't need to post mm -hmm. yes solely not not talking about venues that are like hey man we really need somebody with fifteen thousand draw right now and you know like right it's ticket sales it's sticks and stones for us like that's a whole different ball of wax mm -hmm. this is can you be consistent there's not a flyer behind it we need someone that's going to get the job done mm -hmm. and that's that's your negotiation that's you coming to the table and being like, I'm willing to hold up my end of the commitment. We bring people, you keep them here. Boom. That's, that's what the energy you give to those places. Like if they're not going to make a flyer and promote you, Oh, we have velvet Haas coming. Um, fine. That's okay. Some places don't operate that way and they don't need to. Mm -hmm. um but what is happening is we serve food we serve drinks and our venue is sought after and people are going to come to it um we also have a dj you as the dj your job is to just make sure those people stay there because right they will leave if you're not good right if they don't like what you're doing right and you don't establish that trust and can you do that on a regular basis if this is like a residency type of thing and I think, and like, are you, like you said, are you pleasant to work with? Or are you like mm -hmm. annoying and pressing for promotion and, you know, pushing for things that don't matter all right. the time? Right. Right. Asking for drinks. If it's consistent and they don't put that. To, there's, 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 there's some um, nuance in it because like we said earlier, like I can't really think of why a place wouldn't promote the DJ, but I also understand that some, we've heard it a lot out here. I think more than more recently is quote, we don't want to be a DJ place. Yeah. Where it's oh, like, we don't yeah. want to, I hear that a lot lately where it's like, we don't want to be a DJ, but we want to have DJs, but we're not a DJ. Like they don't want to be a club. And that's, a, and I think don't, that's like, I think that's an ideal situation for me. For a DJ. Yeah. Cause then you yeah. can just do your thing. Do your work. thing. Yeah. Yeah. That's you ideal. don't have to be obligated to be on social media and post things and, cool you just want a guy that can come in and do his job and do well and get out of here cool cool That's you're easy. bringing in the people cool yeah. yeah yeah you know it's it's building those those different avenues because not all gigs are one speed you right. know right there's some things that are massive flyers and videos and this mm -hmm. that and the other and you need to kind of you need to kind of throttle that and be like how much are these people pouring into my cup? Mm -hmm. Are they really, are they really counting on me? Because I, I need to match that energy. Yeah. Or if it's right, kind of like right, right, person, right. person in a place, then I need to match that energy too. Mm -hmm. I don't need to be grandstanding for a spot that I'm a person in a place. Yeah. That's almost what they don't want. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. it's like mm -hmm. you can, you can just get busy 
we're gonna pay you and we'll see you like you said why that's you kind of ideal shit? yeah that's why ideal. you doing all that, the extra that, shit that, this you know? what, that's, that's what we got into this game for we didn't get into this game to be like, marketers we're not in this game like, to be dude, promoters DJ, there was promoters DJ. yeah like let them promote how they want to promote if that includes you or doesn't include you who cares just show up and do your job and do it well it'll be consistent i know that sounds counter i know that sounds counterintuitive though to some Does people it? oh yeah okay because right. i think yeah, yeah. i think some people really do want accolades and recognition and like oh yeah oh yeah that comes in different sometimes that just doesn't come from every venue that you know what i mean like that comes mm-hmm. in a different space mm-hmm. and usually the pro- places that aren't willing to promote i shouldn't say willing that don't promote djs like that aren't the type of places that like like a restaurant's not going to do that a lounge isn't really even going to do that yeah yeah like mm-hmm. they're just selling a venue and a vibe they're not selling like and and honestly, like if we get out of our egos, like unless you're like Calvin Harris, who are we even promoting? Right, right, right. right. We're promoting Nick Lopez, the guy who lives down the street. Like, right, right, right. Because right. honestly, that's how some people just see us. Like we're just guys. So why even promote you like you're a superstar when you're not? You just show up, exactly. dude. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then the places that will promote you like a fucking superstar will. Yeah. Because they know, and let them. know that's worth doing. <laughs> and let them. And let them. And now, you can, now it's a mutual <laughs> thing. Now we can push it. We and can guess what? Fucking, we can fill that cup because they're filling ours. Yeah. And then that's where it comes into play where you don't have to do any other marketing too. All you have to do is repost. <laughs> yeah. Now easy. you're just reposting because they already have a marketing team that makes yeah. flyers. And, and if you're in a smaller market where they're like, yo, we'd appreciate, you know, if you have that skill set, like, it would be helpful then do it because they're gonna you know if you give us these tools we'll post we'll like cool no problem flyers are rarely gonna garner new fans though you rarely, have to you have rarely, to have such an never. off the wall almost you have never, to have bro. such an off the wall flyer where where somebody will even click on the names included and be like well who's this who's that you right. know it is and that's behind a, a party. That's that's a party. That's that's kind that's of that's a party that elevates it. What garners Flyers fans? Interesting because they're it's the easiest way to like convey a lot of information in one post. Right, right. We're going to be at this place at this time with these people, and this is how much it costs to get in or whatever. You have to have that information available. Yeah. But as a person like that had no plans on going to this event and I see a flyer, I could give a fuck less. It's just yeah. a thing on my feed. Yeah. I had yeah. no plans on I have no interest. I didn't I don't know who you are. I don't know what this place is. It just showed up on my feed right past it. Couldn't care less. There's so there's... it's a it's kind of a it's kind of a it's a weird in my i feel like and maybe i'm wrong it's like a weird um i don't want to say double edged sword but it's like it could be a nothing yeah, post i could i could see but it is sword, kind right? of a post that you kind of have to have if you're trying to promote an event yeah those cool flyers and that cool marketing shrunk when the budgets yeah got cut that was the first thing to go was yeah. was the marketing department was even the sponsored posts you know they'd be like uh you know maybe we can I haven't throw, done a sponsored post in years you know and it's like that that money is just not just getting pumped in there anymore like if you look at door hosts and stuff like that like old new york people used to you know pump money behind who was hosting the party Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. now people do hosting for clout mm-hmm. you yeah. know like mm-hmm. for photo- good photographers you know now people are like who's the cheapest person i can get to make it look okay yeah. you know like that marketing all all of 
all of that marketing money kind of got absorbed into well we just know the dj is going to market this Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we just know the bottle server is going to market this why am i paying for me yeah there's a uh, there's a restaurant that we work at that used to do that like there was a lot of marketing that went behind like even on focusing on the djs which was kind of a rare thing Mm -hmm. and um if you DJ there, they had a marketing team that would make flyers for you to post, and they would post. And now that's not really a thing anymore. And guys who have been doing it for a while and still have those flyers, all doctored those flyers to like redo the dates. Yeah. And now people are just kind of making flyers in that same style. Yeah. But you could tell they're all different, but made by different people. Yeah. It's it's. It's unfortunate. They don't have that marketing anymore. They let that go. Yeah, that's that's like the first thing to get cut next to the DJ program. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. First, it's the marketing. Yeah. And if they still need to cut cuts, DJ's out of here. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. We could just play a playlist. At the end of the day, people are here to eat. We covered a lot today. We did. And I th- I think maybe that's a good place to wrap up for this week. Um, we definitely go back and use this episode as a nice little marketing 101, I think, to kind of get some more angles on things because obviously we're all in different markets. Obviously some of this information doesn't apply to you and you're going to be like, what the fuck? Like, I don't <laughs> I don't even, I've never even had a flyer for a night <laughs> plate or whatever. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> the principles still stay. The marketing yourself still stands. And, and what I was going to kind of footnote on what you were saying, Neek, um, the things that grow the traction, live mashups, live routines, uh-huh. something cool or weird happening in the club. Like if somebody, whatever, we saw a video of somebody playing a Vuvuzela while somebody was DJing the other day. And I sent <laughs> that to 17 people. I was like, this is fucking hilarious. <laughs> it's, that's great marketing for that DJ, you know, like create something interesting. Like that was like, uh, this DJ set still haunts my nightmares or whatever that creates a fun narrative. So effortlessly where you're just like, Here's a clip of just what was going on. Like uh, DJ Spider always reposts his video of that woman asking him for a song request. Oh, yeah. That's great fucking marketing, you know? Uh And he did some other stuff um, while he was in Europe being like, when you accidentally order three different egg dishes and they bring out three eggs three different ways. And it got like 30,000 likes, you know? And these fun creative ideas are what's going to move the needle they're going to accidentally bring in new people into your dj sphere that probably have never heard of you as a dj right nor do they even care about djs but now they're kind of on your radar because they heard you do a cool mashup or whatever right Mm -hmm. it still works it still works and people have made whole tiktok careers off of that Mm -hmm. so Mm -hmm. Any, I think that's a good place. Yeah, I th- I was gonna say anything else we need to add before we roll out. Um, roll this out. Will be up <clears throat> this week. Yeah, I yeah. don't remember. Today's Tuesday. It'll be up in Tuesday. tomorrow or the Thursday. Yeah, we'll we'll and, drop uh, it with uh, Trav. Tell them your DJ schedule so they can come see you. Yeah, I got Thursday at Best Friend, Friday uh, with Nick Lopez, uh, Paradise Fever at Durango, uh, Saturday at Alibi, uh, Middle Bar at Aria. Yeah. 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 Nice little Vegas tour. We're just going to do your schedule this week because you know what? I want people to go see you. If you're in Vegas. I want people to go see Trap. Go see see Joe Williams. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think that's going to cover it. Oh, uh. Before we go, gentlemen, 30 seconds. Song of the summer. What do you got? Brat. Anything off Brat. Anything off Brat. Anything off Brat. Or Espresso? I mean, honestly, 
It's, it's still not like us right now up here. I can... It's still, it's still, still that way up here. Still getting still, them going. Yeah, still getting them going. Oh, up here. What about Chapel Roan? I'm not in, but I see the popularity. I do too. That's a big one. Um, espresso, I think, has to I do it for me. Mike espresso too. has a lot of legs. Espresso has a lot it's of a legs. It's a good song. It's a really it's good, a song. good song. It's a really good song. I don't care. It's a good song. There's a lot of edits, like a lot of remixes. A lot. Yeah. They're pretty good. That's, They're I think. Good. That's usually a sign of like a song's popularity when you start to hear different versions. Oh yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's perfect. I think we'll wrap it up there. Song of the summer is a two way tie. Two way tie. Not like us and espresso. Yeah. I'm in. Uh for pop and for hip hop charts. There you go. And, uh, for, uh, for, con- for country for country charts, I would go with uh, a bar song, Shabuzi. Shabuzi. Shibuzi, a bar song, yeah. Tipsy. Yeah. Um, yeah. House. Oh, we're doing genres. Fuck it. Oh. All the charts. Um, All of them. Shiver, John Summit. Uh, I, I was going to say, it's that time for you to get on the floor. Oh, yeah. 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 Monster. Monster. Yeah. Yeah, I fuck with that. Uh, Heavy. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw that one in there, uh, and throw the new uh, Bruno Mars Lady Gaga song. Oh There's yeah, one yeah, on yeah. The, Let's uh, throw that in there. Apple US charts today. Let's throw that in um, there. It wasn't a bad summer for music. It wasn't it? Wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. It was different. I got what different. I wanted. I got what I wanted. I got Drake. It was a gal. I got it was a gal summer. It was a gal summer. summer. I mean, yeah, yeah, even in hip hop, even in hip hop too. God damn. Yeah. 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 Girls stepped it up this summer. Uh, R.I.P. B. King. uh, R.I.P. B. King. R.I.P. Club Godzilla. That won't hurt, bro. That won't hurt. I did a, I did a whole B. King set on Saturday with my saxophonist band. That won't hurt. (laughs) That's awesome. (laughs) I I really did. It, It went off. It went off. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Well, a little saxophone on the beat king. I like it. I yeah. like that. Super sexy and ratchet. Uh, Come on. Yeah. That's yeah. Exactly. That's everything we need. <laughs> yes. All right. Gentlemen. Club Godzilla. RIP right. Club Godzilla. What a blast. Uh, let's do it again next week. What do you say? Let's do it. I'm in. Let's do it. Until then. Hey. Adios.